how much revenue are you gonna make for the year 2023? I'm gonna close out at 165,000. Just never thought that I'd be able to make it this fast. Anybody can build this business. On the road with loan signing agents here with signing agent Bontrick out in the great state of Texas. How you doing, man? Man, I'm doing good. How you doing, Mark? Oh, God, I'm so excited. This is a little bit <laughs> years in the making. I'm like, Bontrick, we got to share your story because it is so inspiring. Let's inspire right out of the gate. 2023 is almost over. We're in December. How much revenue are you going to make for the year 2023? And I'm going to close out at 165000 165000 Yep, 165000 <laughs> You have a smile ear to ear right now. Yeah. Um, you know, when you say that, when you hear it back, like, how does that make you feel? What emotions go through? And, and let me just let everybody know, he started this business right out of college. So you were a young man. You were 27, 28. Am I close? Yes, um, uh-huh. Yep. And so like- now. You're 28, you have a six figure business. Like, why does that make you feel, man? And it makes me feel good. Um, just never thought that I'd be able to make it this fast. At least I, I, I didn't think I'd be able to build a business year one, two and three that quick yeah. and uh, make 165K in a high interest rate environment right now this year. The other inspiring part is you're doing $165,000 in, in, in the highest interest rates we've had in 15, 20 years. So it's busy. You just got to go, you got to put the work in, which we're going to talk about. But I think what's so inspiring, man, is you're such a young man. Uh, and, and what I love what you just said before we get into your story is I didn't realize how quick I would be able to build this. Mm -hmm. See, what I, when I, what I hear that's three years. To me, yep. that is quick. To you, that is quick. So I mm -hmm. want people to hear because some people go like, I'm not making that after year number one. Vontra just said it's been so quick and by quick, he means three years. And so it's all putting things into perspective. So thank you for saying that. Cause I think oh, yeah. some people feel like if they're not making that after year one, they're failing. You know, I ask everybody the same question, like take us back to like, what made you take this direction of being a signing agent? So I'm gonna let you tell your story because I think it's super inspiring. So last year in college, 2020, that's the pandemic. Everybody knows everything is shut down. I had to think. Number one, how am I going to get a job coming out of college, even though I'm having I have a four year business degree? Number two, do I have to move back home with my parents? Because that was all, all these are, are, are real deals that I was thinking about. I was thinking about that every day. Um, I only had three thousand dollars to my name before moving back to Fort Worth, Texas that year. And again, I had to make a decision between those three things. You were all told graduate college and you graduate college, you're gonna get a job, right? That's why yeah. we go to school. It's supposed to be a ticket to a high paying job. Mm -hmm. But the economy was shut down. We're in a recession. Mm -hmm. People aren't even allowed in offices. Talk me through that so people can understand where you were because where you are today is quite the opposite. But yeah. where were you there mentally three, three and a half years ago, right? Well, no, yeah. Um, mentally, I mean, I was paranoid. I couldn't work you know, as much. And even if I did work, it was part-time. I mean, I can just really say I was just in the unknown mm. because six months before graduating, I had to make a decision if I was going to go all in, mm -hmm. be a loan signing agent. I was yeah. paranoid thinking left and right, trying to scramble. I was scrambling yeah. is what I can say, trying to figure out what I was going to do. I was super, I was I don't know. I was super scared. And I couldn't imagine being a college age student who was about to graduate expecting mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. and but to realize the world shut down. And so to use the word paranoid, is, I think is very appropriate because it's like, well, what am I going to do? Are people going to hire me? What, what's what's the next step? And the crazy part is sharing right now, you had $3,000 in your bank. Like, what am I going to do? And I want to speak to young adults mm -hmm. here. I want to yeah. speak to another 24 year old right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I don't, I want them to feel like they're not alone if they have all these question marks. What I'm going to tell you is, you know, why weren't we prepared? Mm. <laughs> why weren't we prepared? Like how the real world is going to be? Because again, six months goes by really quick. I just felt unprepared to graduate college and even move back with $3,000 left in my bank account. I was like, well, I may have to go home the whole gist of you're going to get a job as soon as you get out, 
you know, that might not be the best option if you have another option to start your business. My bet is you have student loans. Mm -hmm. And so it's like you, you, you go into debt only to realize that like the world stopped turning. Like that yeah. must be a weird feeling of like, did I even make the right decision? And is the next decision going to be the right decision? Because I just made a huge, what seems like the wrong decision. Am I kind of close here? Oh, yeah. I mean, for me, it, it felt like musical chairs. Oh, that's a good way of saying <laughs> it. felt like musical chairs. I'm like, hey, we're having fun in college. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And it, I got to keep it real. The last, the last year, last six months to a year, being in college, about to graduate, that's how it felt. And I was like, oh, everything started to slow down. I'm like, look, you only have this in your bank account. You are you don't have a job. You don't think about going to a job yet. You're going to move back home. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I want to, you know, rise to the occasion. But I did not feel like that. I just did it. It was hard to get through those times, you know, before graduating. But I made a decision. The fact that you couldn't find a job is what kind of led you to this, this, this decision. Mm -hmm. Yes. Man, what a crazy time. But to think that you graduated college in the middle of it to a shutdown economy must have just been crazy. But like all of these stories, you're inspiring because you saw the wall and you built a door. And that door has become exciting agent. So let's walk people through that door together, okay? Correct. So yeah. you just graduate college, uh, 2020. How much money did you make in 2020? We're kind of at the end, tail end of your college year. So 2020 tail end, it was literally, all I had was $10,000 made of the whole year, but $3,000 left. So graduating college that year, I made $10,000 because I was working part-time. You know, cool. So spent. you started your signing agent journey in 2021. Yes. Okay. The beginning now, of 2021. Yeah. What I love about this, and I think success is, is all about luck when luck meets hard work. So mm -hmm. the luck is when you, you came into the signing agent industry at the right time during COVID. Correct. So how much money did you make at 25 years old at your first year in the business? Oh, in 2021, first year, I made 69.9. Okay. <laughs> it so, sounds like a price sticker, but that's what I remember that number vivid. I'm like, my first year out of college, I made 69. I mean, congratulations on that. And by the way, I hope I tell you now how proud I am of you, man. I saw you in Vegas. I, I tell you on Instagram, so proud of what you've mm -hmm. built. You make $70,000. And, and the truth is, in 2020, it was pretty easy to make money. But I think this is where your story gets even better. Mm -hmm. Interest rates jump up to 6% mm -hmm. in 2022. How mm -hmm. much money did you make in 2022? In 2022, I made $150,000. $150. <laughs> I mean, incredible. You made more money when interest rates were 6% than when they were 3 And then you already shared that you're going to finish this year at 165 Yes. which is more money than you made in 2022. And I say that because interest rates are now, they've touched 8% about a month ago. Yes, now they're back even like higher. Seven and a half. No, but, yeah, even higher, yep. But you're making more money in a higher interest rate market. So I think this is where the story gets really good. Yes. So let uh -huh. me ask you this. You're such a young man, 25 years old. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, interest rates go to 6%. Mm -hmm. How come you didn't listen to everyone saying, oh, the interest rates are going up, no one's going to be buying and selling. How come you made almost twice the money in a twice the interest rate higher environment? Well, first of all, I just simply started working harder. Mm. I hit the ground running even harder with interest rates being being high. Give me your even... logic behind that. Mm -hmm. So, because I love it, I think I hope everybody heard this. Right? It's like when everybody right. runs, you, you 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 run away, you ran in. Mm -hmm. You worked harder. What did you understand that most people didn't in that time? Well, everybody was thinking high interest rate. Oh, there's no loans out there to, to be originated. Oh, there's no loan signings. Well, that was com the complete opposite. <laughs> that was the complete opposite when walking into title companies. Hey, we're actually, you know, we're needing refinances done. We're needing cash outs done. Hey, okay. I thought nobody's originating loans, but seeing it on the ground level as a notary, oh, people are doing cash outs, getting rid of debt. So that's where my logic was there. Even before you start seeing the, the signings come in, what made you have that mindset? Instead of like, well, there's just going to be no business. What made you go attack that? Man, Mark, I read a lot. <laughs> when others are fearful, mm -hmm. you know, you got to be greedy. 
When others are greedy, be fearful. And a lot of people, I mean, it's a cliche deal by Warren Buffett, but I really was feeling like if everybody's slowing down, I'm going to go faster. You saw the opportunity. When you saw notaries leave the industry, yep. you saw that as opportunity. You're like, leave, leave, leave. There's more for me to more eat. Business for us to get and so in. what you said, when everyone's fearful, you became greedy. You're like, oh, everybody's leaving the business. Yep. So therefore, there's simply going to be more opportunity because there's less notaries. Mm -hmm. And and frankly, that's why we're, you're busy in 2023. There's still uneducated signing agents or uneducated people are thinking on the outside, oh, no one's refining, no one's buying homes. Yes. Therefore, now you're crushing because there's actually less competition now than ever. And so if people actually just go over that hump, talk to title companies, like you said, you'll be surprised on what you see on the other side. I actually think it's easier to make money now than ever before because there's yes. less notaries in the business. Yes. And so if you're willing to double down on the effort, double down on the, on the expenditure of effort, Correct. you'll make money because there's less people you're competing against. Correct. Correct. If someone's told you, Von Trick, it is slow for selling no. agents, what would you say? <laughs> you're not working hard enough. You're not hitting the ground hard enough. You're not walking into title companies. You're not sending emails. You definitely not calling signing services, telling them, Hey, I want business. I remember calling the signing service saying that before mm -hmm. you just have to get out there and go a hundred miles an hour. Mm -hmm. When everybody's slowing down, you go faster. I love you're that. just you not getting enough. You're not busy right now because you haven't put in the work. You're not doing enough work. You're not doing enough. If I'm sitting at home, I'm like, nope, title company. Where's the next five? Sometimes you'll be you'll be surprised. Oh, I didn't even know this title company was over here. Let me go pay up. Hey, Bontrick, you know what? <laughs> we actually do need a notary. Do you go out to Justin, Texas? It's an hour away, but uh, I'll do it for the right fee. We'll pay you what you need. We've never had a notary bring us docs back. Hey, y'all, y'all not doing enough work. That's all I'm saying, y'all. <laughs> if you have no signings, it's not poor me. It is what title companies haven't I hit. And the purpose of these conversations is in getting to the mindset of big earners. And it's not that you're smarter than anybody. It's not that successful signing agents smarter. That. It's just the, the signing agent works the hardest, makes the most money. Yes, that is right? correct. As you just said something. I'm going to go an hour away. What I also heard is a signing agent who'll do whatever it takes for the client because exactly. the client comes first. It's not about the money. Mm -hmm. It's about the service. It would always be what the next person is doing because mm -hmm. I get that response every time. Oh, wow. You'll go that far. You'll even scan documents back to me. The facial expressions I get ah, <laughs> when I come I into it. the offices and they're like, We've never had a notary do that. And I'm like, what? Like, mm -hmm. I'm thinking left and right. Like, like, what? I would think that notaries are doing this to keep their business flowing. Yeah. And more than now, I have an escrow officers telling me they're going to coattail on me as a notary. You know, you didn't say, oh, because you're going to pay me more money. Mm -hmm. It's because of the smile. I love that. I don't think anyone's yeah. and it's used that before. And, and when you were saying that, I'm like, oh my gosh, you get so much fulfillment from serving. Yep. And and that is when I believe, you know, you're in the right business. It's because mm -hmm. it's not about the money. It's about creating fulfillment through serving others. Mm -hmm. And that is just so beautiful. You know, let me, let me ask you another question. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're 24 when you first entered this business. Yep. Did you feel like your age hindered your ability to build this business? And why didn't you feel like your age was going to hinder you from growing such an amazing business so quick? My thought process was it won't hinder me because I knew I was going to outbeat my content. Uh, competition. Mm -hmm. I knew I was going to outwork everybody. I knew I was going to work hard every single day and make the calls, make the visits I need to go see, whatever it is to make sure that I would become a successful loan signing agent. I'm doing something that matters to move me forward. What I hope everybody heard, and this is this is what I'm going to summarize what you said, because I don't think it's relative to age. I think it's relative to mind. You said, look, no one's going to outwork me, dude. Like I'm going to outserve and bring fulfillment by doing it. I hope everybody heard that because yep. I had just nothing to do with how much I care, how much I work, how much I serve. I knew I would go above and beyond. I knew I would over deliver. And that was giving them all my time, <laughs> even mm -hmm. if I didn't have it. If you need me to drive extra, I'm going to drive extra for it. Yeah. And that's what it, that's what it was. I'm going to go above and beyond. Kind mm -hmm. of on the same vein, but I'm going to ask a little bit different. If Vontrick can build this business 
do you think anybody can build this business and why? Well, anybody can build this business and why? Number one, well, number one is effort. Mm. We can't coach effort. If you have effort and the desire to, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get in and serve people. You're going to end up on top. You cannot know what the heck you're doing. Like I was when I first, when I first started, if you're going to go in and, you know, you know, be who you are. You know, if you're a person, you like to talk to people like I know I am. Uh, it, you are, you're already winning by a long shot. If you're personable, yeah. all that, and you're, and you're willing to put in the effort a thousand times a day. Oh yeah. That, that experience, all that other stuff, like, Hey, that's going to come with time, yeah. but <laughs> put in your effort and you're, you're going to be able to build a business. You're going to be able to just skyrocket this business really quick before you can even think about it. Like, Oh man, I'm getting a lot of signings <laughs> out of nowhere. What I love that you just said is you embraced that experience will come with time. Yep. Too many people want to be experienced in month one. That's not how it works. But you lack in experience, you make up with effort. And what Vontra just said is if you put in effort, you're going to build this business. That's why. There's very few businesses in America, I believe, that reward effort as much as this one. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you put in the time, you build the relationships, you're going to make the money and make right. impact more importantly. I always ask all you successful signing agents, you know, if, if there's one piece of advice you can give somebody to be successful, what would that one piece of advice be? Do everything scared. Mm. Do it scared. Do it scared. I can tell you from, from experience uh, right off the jump, trying to go market to a, a, a title, a title rep or, you know, escrow officer got up to the door and turned around, sat back in my car for a minute. Like, I can't do this. <laughs> Get back, get back out of the car, maybe five, 10 minutes later. I really done this. Went back in and just let them know, hey, you have any closings on the fly? Give them to me. That's it. How yep. many different times did that scenario happen in the beginning? Oh, all the time. <laughs> Mentally already it was going like that. But it's just you have to get over that fear and just do it right. scared. And, because if I didn't, that wouldn't have been my, and that was my first direct closing that I got. No way. So the first time you went when you were scared to death mm -hmm. ended up being your first direct closing. Yep. Hey, I'm not going to lie. It took a month, but yep. she emailed me back. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is the one, <laughs> this is the one. I was like, this is it. What? So, hey, you got to do it scared. Do it. What I love about that piece of advice is, the vulnerability of you mm -hmm. saying that you, when your car came back, went back to the front door. My yeah. bet is even to this day, there's still a little twitch of nerves that you still have to work through. Am I kind of close? Yes, for sure. Um, and I would just like to add just really quick. On the, on the other side of doing it scared, get used to the delayed gratification. Mm. Please, like just if you can do something a month straight and you don't see any results, but you know you're maybe you maybe you don't know because I I sure as heck did it <laughs> three years ago. Maybe you don't know that delayed gratification is something else because getting no signings for a month and then boom, one day it just mm. a month or you know, month and a half or a month and a week later, mm -hmm. boom, like two or three signings start coming. You're like, I knew all that wasn't for nothing. I I, I knew it. I'm mm. telling you, y'all better get used to that delayed gratification. Well, I think that's the second piece of advice. That. The second piece of advice wrapped into your first. It's like, look, do it scared, but also realize delayed gratification. If you can yes. develop that muscle, mm -hmm. you can be successful in almost anything. It is yep. this instant gratification is what that kills more signing agent businesses mm -hmm. or the need for instant gratification that yes. kills more signing agent businesses than anything else. It's yes. realizing that sometimes relationships take more than one meeting. Maybe they yes. got to see your smile a couple times. Mm -hmm. And this idea that like someone should hire you the first time is what really crushes people's businesses. Mm -hmm. And again, what I love about what you said 30 minutes ago, it's like, this has been quick. Three years is quick to you. Some people see three years like, oh my gosh, that's a long time, Von Trick. But no, if you really think about most businesses in America, yep. to get to $100,000 in year number two, insane. To be at 165 in, in revenue business with mm -hmm. basically no overhead outside of gas, like 
Yep. Insane, right? Yep. And so I hope everybody heard that delayed gratification because impatience crushes more businesses than anything else. I mean, consistency. If you don't have consistency, they already know you're going to probably give up and I'm. that's when I'm going to swoop in on you. So, hey, so loan signing agents, you better, you know, <laughs> or if you could just catch me at the office, we might get a sign in together right. and I'll plug you in. But well, you better be there more than me is what I'm saying. They better see your face more than me. What I love about this whole conversation is that I'm talking to a man who has an unbelievable work ethic. You are not going to outwork me. Yep. You know, one of my favorite quotes is by, by Will Smith. He's like, I hate losing so much that I want to die on a treadmill. He's like, me and you are going to race on a treadmill so you can last longer as you will not beat me on that treadmill because I will die on that before I lose. And that mentality is like what you just said. It's like, you're not going to be in that office more than I am. Because when you give up, I'm still going. And so whether I get that client in a, in a month or a year, I'm not going to stop until I get that. And I hope everybody heard that, man, because... Really, this business is not about the X's and O's. Yes, I taught you the X's and O's, but this is about the players making the plays. Yep. And you do that better than most. And I love this because now I really know why you've built such a big business because you're tenacious. You like you understand it, it, this is a, a touch point game. Mm -hmm. This is a top of mind marketing game. This is me getting to know you game. Mm -hmm. This is not, I need a signing. I want it today. You're never going to see me. I absolutely love this, man. So let, let's go in this last conversation. Thank you again so much, man. And yes, sir. before mm -hmm. I go into this, you know, I, I, you know, I remember something that you shared before we jumped on and is that this business has paid off your student loans. How good is that? Oh. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> that was a goal in mine when I graduated college. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but you know, when I found this, I was like, well, heck yeah, this is going to be the business that pays it off because making 10K a month for three months, poof, all the loans are poof, gone. And I did cash stuffing, meaning lump sums. Yeah, I know it might be unconventional, but you have to do what you got to do. I How did do what I had to do. I said, I needed it off. Get that off. And and let's keep let's keep the game rolling. Let's let's keep moving. But yeah, weight off my shoulders. Congratulations! Yes, it took sir. me like nine years to pay off mine. You paid yours off in three. It's unbelievably epic. So congratulations! And it's just another byproduct of what makes this business amazing. I always wrap up the conversation with with you know you've been in the business three and a half years. Mm -hmm. When you look back on your journey, and by the way, mm -hmm. you're still at the beginning of your journey in my journey. opinion. But let's just mm -hmm. digress. Looking back on your journey, three short years. Mm -hmm. Is there something you regret, something you wish you would have done earlier? If there was anything, what was it for you? Oh, um, if, if uh, regret not doing something when I was in, you know, first got in three years ago is going directly to title offices, escrow officers out the bat, like got right it. off the bat. So how long did you work for signing services? More or less a year? Oh, first, yeah, for a full year, just doing nothing but signing services, all kinds of them, yes. I love this, right? Your biggest regret is you wish you would have done direct business sooner. Yes. So let's talk about that. Was there a limiting belief that was holding you back from making the decision to go direct? Well, real quick, I was looking left, looking right, like, uh, they already have five notaries, mm. probably, or a handful. You know, that that's just a number I'm throwing out, but... They have a handful of notaries. Why in the heck would they pick me? That was my biggest deal. Oh. And that was that was so hard to come over. You hit something that I think every signing agent who hasn't gone direct deals with that limiting belief. The yep. limiting belief is that they, uh, they're already in business. Mm -hmm. So therefore, before I walk in that front door, they obviously already have one, two, three, or five notaries. Yep. Why in the world would they hire me? That mm -hmm. limiting belief probably cost you a hundred thousand dollars yep you know when i say it like that that's crazy when you think about it and i say that because i don't want someone watching this mm -hmm. leaving that same money on the table because you are believing what von trick did it's like why in the world would they hire me if they already have one two three or four notaries yep and so thank you for that vulnerability, because if you could do it all over again, you'd go direct out of the gate and you would lose that limiting belief mm -hmm. and realize even if they have a Rolodex of notaries, they still have room for one more on their team. Exactly. I mean, people it's leave. crazy. People take vacations. People take off. I'm scooping in. They're going to see my face. 
Yeah, and that's not just something that we say. Like people legitimately take vacations. People legitimately get flat tires. People legitimately have like last minute childcare issues, meaning notaries. Notaries have readers where the signing takes three hours when it should have taken an hour. And so without doubt, they literally need a roll of decks of notaries. Are you communicating to the community that is a true statement? That is a true statement, 1,000%. I, it still happens to me now, and I'm three years in. And some people are like, oh, you're just everybody's number one. No, I'm 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 enough of everybody's number oh, one. God. <laughs> I'm enough oh my gosh, right okay. now. Because <laughs> when I started, it was zero. But, you know, now, again, I'm enough of, of enough number ones for some uh, title companies in the DFW area. Okay, so let me, oh, this is such a good conversation. Yep. Is it safe to say that you're a lot of people's number two or three? Oh, heck yeah. I want here I get mad at that. it still. I'm like, get, I want them. But, but more importantly, but more importantly, you don't need to be everybody's number one to make six figures. I see, oh. but the point of the thing I'm trying to break down is conversations. Everybody thinks, Von Trick, you mm -hmm. got to be the number one notary for every single escrow officer. Yes. And you're like, I am number two or three on numerous desks. And it's about volume. It's not yep. necessarily about being the number one. Now, do you want to be the number one? Yes, but that wasn't, you know, well, we all do. But the, yeah. the truth is, is there is place for you to be a two or three and not get discouraged by it because they're still feeding you business. Talk mm -hmm. about that because I want you to talk people off the edge that like they feel like they got to be number one for everybody. You just said I have enough of those. Mm -hmm. And then I feel my other part of my schedule with being the two or three Yep. And even as you're making new entry points, you're probably the four and five for some places. So exactly. you have kind of an all over the spectrum. Talk about that mix that creates your amazing business. Yeah, because, well, we have to understand that if you're enough of everyone's number one, or I don't want to say everyone, let's just say two or three, and you're getting some solid business. I mean, there could be one you walk into that now they're pushing you to be their number one because they need help because somebody's phasing out and that happened to me and now that number one that's phasing out a few notaries and some mm -hmm. things happened that i don't know they made me their number one and literally 75 of my business comes from that number one. and i'm like all right 20 you know 20, the other 30 percent, 25 percent is sign and service and other two or threes that i'm in hey one or two here every week but my number one now that I've took over, it brings me all, most of all my business. So the couple things I heard in there is the patience to be a number two, because someone yeah. phased out. I yeah. think a lot of signing agents give up too quick. And they're like, well, I'm not a number one, I'm not a number one. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. People move, people career change, people retire. I can't tell you the amount of people that I became a signing agent because they retired, they moved. I had this one gentleman who was moved to the Philippines after 30 years. And I just happened to be the number two for like six months. Mm -hmm. And so my point is, is, is your patience got you to the number one position of your most biggest client right now. And you're willing to play the long game with the other people, the two and threes. And, well, and hustle I, while you wait. You're already getting business hustle. Keep, you know, doing what you got to do on the side and boom. You never know, you're going to get that phone call. Do you still fill some of your empty slots with signing services? Yes, I do. I, I still heard do. that. It is not a direct versus signing service industry. It is a revenue industry. Revenue. Yes. It is. If I have downtime, would I rather leave the house for 90 bucks or do nothing? And, yeah. and, and you're looking at a $160,000 a year signing agent who's telling you it's not about direct only. It's not, it's, this is an egoless business. Well, let me say it mm -hmm. like this. If you're a good business owner, you're egoless. Yes, and it's uh -huh. not about like, oh, I'm not going to leave the house for $90. It's like, if I don't have nothing to do, I'm going to create mm -hmm. revenue because revenue is the bloodstream of every business in America. Yeah, and so I want you to hear that you're talking to a, you're listening to a $160,000 signing agent who does signing service business, who is also the number two and three and four of other clients and also as a number one. It is really a beautiful rainbow of different clients that feed you business. And I think that a lot of people see signing agents like you and assume they're just number one for everybody. It's like, uh -huh. no. I'm hustling. I'm building this. The reason I got to 165 because I'm out working everybody. I'm not too good for $90 signings. I'm not too good to travel an hour and a half one way. I'm not too good to be a two, three, or four. I'm not too good to work for a signing service. I'm going to do as many things that create revenue. Bontrick, unbelievable conversation day, man. As we kind of wrap this up, man, is there any 
kind of last comments or motivational, inspirational things you want to say to anybody out there who's just starting to build their business and, and looks up to you after this conversation? I just, I'm going to just say uh, like a simple quote, like don't quit before the miracle. I almost threw away a signing service when I first got in. I don't think people want to hear me say that. Like, well, you almost like I couldn't catch a sign and if I wanted to from the signing service. Almost was like, you know what? I'm deleting that app. I'm just going to focus on these. I don't know. That day I did and I guess I forgot. And then next thing you know, maybe a week. I don't remember where it was, but I know it was close on that day. I got a signing from them and then one of those signing services, my one of my top tiers, along with the direct. Because I tell other notaries that shadow me sometimes out here that just want to know how I do business and how I do signings. I tell them I almost threw away a signing service because I couldn't catch anything. I'm like, had nothing to do with the signing service. It was just me being impatient. Mm. Don't quit before the miracle, y'all. I'm sorry. I've actually never heard that. The only reason you fail is because you quit. There's no yeah, other yeah. reason. You gotta keep putting in the work, keep putting the work. Yeah. Like you said, believe in delayed gratification. I call it invisible mm -hmm. growth. You gotta know you're growing even though you can't see it. It's like going to the gym. Boncher right. didn't get that big right. I see you, dog. Boncher didn't get that big <laughs> going to the gym one day. Yeah, yeah. it took some time, but uh all kidding aside man i'm so proud of you brother yes sir i appreciate it i'm very very proud of you thank you for taking thank the time you. to inspire the community man I, like i told you a few times i still think this is just the beginning of your journey because you have the work ethic you have the commitment to service you have the commitment to serve the fact that you even talk to other notaries and don't gatekeep what works i mean you embody what the loan signing system community is about so thank you Thank you. Thank you, man. So hopefully I'll see you at next conference, bro. It's been a minute, but until then, keep going. Let's go. See you later, man. Thank you. Yes, sir. See you later. Bye. Bye, community.